My name is James and I paint minis. This is Spoon 37 Minis. So we're continuing with the Metal Tyranid Hive Tyrants. In the last video I showed you doing the most extreme highlight with Wild Rider Red from the Games Workshop. Now I'm following this up with another Games Workshop colour called Evil Sun Scarlet and the idea is to paint this in the areas between the most extreme highlight and the previous highlight in order to have a nice graduation between the lightest and darkest colours. As you can see, uh, continuing in the same order, starting with the left leg around the hoof, painting the area just above the tips, and then I'll gradually move on to the lower leg, the mid leg, the upper leg, etc. Uh, the idea is, as I say, not to go over the edges or the extreme highlight and not to block out any areas that you've already you know, painted the recesses darker or, or what have you. You're just trying to paint in between so that you've got the most extreme highlight as the Wild Rider Red and then the next most extreme colour is this Evil Sun Scarlet. Now the other trick to this, you might be wondering, oh why didn't you do this before the Wild Rider Red? Well if you mess up and get the Wild Rider Red lines too thick, you can come back in with this colour and actually paint it over the Wild Rider Red partially so that you actually make the Wild Rider, Wild Rider Red line thinner and still have this effect and of course where it overlaps the Evil Sun Scarlet will be slightly lighter and then where it's overlapping darker colours it will be darker so you get even more of this graduated effect. Phil, I must apologise for the camera work. I didn't realise the camera was pointing quite as far down as it was. It gradually improves as the video footage goes along, so I'm afraid for these early stages I'll just have to put up with that, but you can still, in the top of the frame, see the area that I'm painting. Now, because this is painting in between areas that have already been painted and I don't want to mess up, I am having to take my time and do this very, very slowly, very carefully. The paint is watered down to a very thin layer and I'm using a Games Workshop S layer brush which has a reasonably fine tip. You know, it's, it's nothing like a really high-end brush but it's good enough for this purpose. The other reason why this is comparatively slow, as you can see here, I'm sort of looking and evaluating, seeing where I think I need to paint and where I don't. There is a bit of guesswork with this, trying to paint near the brightest colour of course, but then also trying to avoid painting any areas that should be dark, and also being mindful of the overall colour. So how light should this red be overall? Am I painting too big an area? Am I painting too small an area and leaving most of it too dark? So all this is going on whilst I'm painting and may actually slightly slow down the progress rather than just slapping paint on and hoping for the best. As with the previous video, I'm sorry you can't actually see as I'm painting the inside of the leg. Unfortunately, in this footage, the model is actually completely obscured. So you get a good view of the Citadel XL paint handle, but other than that, you just have to accept that this is what the footage is for now. Because of course, having painted it, I can't go and reshoot the footage without 
you know, stripping the model back and doing all this again, which seems a tremendous amount of work for a comparatively minor mistake. As I say, the footage does get better as I gradually realise that this is happening and try to position the model lower in the frame. It's just that when I'm painting with the monitor off to one side, I can't necessarily be looking at what I'm painting in real time on a screen. I just have to go with what's in front of me and hope that the camera is capturing it. As I'm getting towards the end of this leg, I'm hoping you can see that the tones are slightly smoothed out. It's starting to look like that final, nicely graduated flesh, kind of like a, but like a cooked lobster almost, where you've got the peaks are almost going into the orange, but then everything else is a nice graduation from dark to light red. So with the first leg done, it's time to move on to the second leg. I'm just watering down the paint and twisting the brush to a fine point. And then I'll start again down with the lower part of the leg, just above the hoof. I don't go right to the tip because we've already painted that with Wild Rider Red, but you find there's a significant step from the Wild Rider back to the Army Painter Pure Red that I just need to paint over sort of the bottom half of it so that it has a graduation rather than a step change. in exactly the same order to make sure I don't miss anything. Um, there is a slight difference between the two legs because they are actually modelled slightly differently. There's a, a sort of frame to the, the spikes at the back of the leg on the one leg and then completely not on the leg I'm working on now. So there are just these minute differences to look out for, which is very typical of these older metal models. They tend to be a little more symmetrical these days. So this might look a little bit confused, I'm trying to work out the best way of getting into a certain area, what angle I should go from in front, behind, no, behind seems to be the best way to get at it. It's just a small area that I need paint on without painting over the work we've already done. just noticed how high up in the frame I was working and the footage should get better from here on in where I'm keeping my hands a bit lower. I do of course for the next video adjust the position of the camera to make this a little bit easier for myself. Now, as with the Wild Rider Red, there is just a little bit of guesswork on the upper thigh due to these being sort of flex muscles and needing relatively soft shading, so I'm just going with the idea of painting roughly around the Wild Rider Red sections without obscuring anything that's substantially darker, which means a little bit of 
guessing where the highlight should be, but it's fairly straightforward once the lighter colour is in place. It was just getting the absolute peaks done first that gives you a clue as to where these highlights need to be. And then it's relatively easy to just paint nearby those highlights and then you're actually already painting the right areas. Now part of this involves painting above and below the highlights but then also painting perhaps a little at the side, particularly above or below anything that seems like a, the peak of the flex muscle because of course the whole thing would be somewhat highlighted in catching the light. Now we're continuing the work we did last time. Uh, we highlighted the tips of these lines on the sort of waist area, um, a little bit below the rib cage, so that it would be where the light might actually catch it. And then all I'm doing with this Evil Sun Scarlet is just highlighting the bit immediately below that. It's not rocket science, but it should show more of a subtle graduation if it's visible when the model's fully assembled. I think it will be at the front. I'm not sure, so sure about the sides. Um, the back because the tail will cover the back, the arms may cover the sides but doing this in sub assemblies all of this shows so I might as well put some paint on and if it does show later on, fantastic. Moving on to the ribcage area, this again, although we've got a large area to work with it's a case of getting paint in next to where I've highlighted before without obscuring all of the darker details. This does give me a bit of artistic license on where to place the brush, but I'm also mindful that the overall colour shouldn't be getting too bright, but also shouldn't be mostly dark with just a, a very slim highlight. There should be a nice graduation, so I'm putting a little extra paint on this to make it a little bit lighter, and that should help with drawing the eye and creating the focal point. Unlike with the Wild Rider red stage, I'm doing a lot more on the sort of central bone of the rib cage. Um, I will just leave a divot towards the bottom where it actually curves, um, but it means that the overall colour will be lighter and yet there is still a dark patch in the middle so you get that full range of tones. The trick I'm using here is where I highlighted these very sharp peaks with vertical lines of Wild Rider Red, I'm actually highlighting on both sides with the uh, Evil Sun Scarlet so that it's actually it builds up to the colour from both sides of the ribcage and actually makes it quite a pronounced highlight but it doesn't sort of have this giant step change from dark to light immediately it gradually ramps up and then it ramps back down as you go across now of course some of these sections heading towards the sides are exceptionally narrow and it's reasonable to either miss out paint or just be very very careful about where you place the brush particularly this upper rib it's actually quite hard to not wipe out the work you've already done and then these bits here i'm still going to highlight but again they may be obscured by the arms so this may not show later we'll see Same again on the other side, largely the same details, and again it may not show when we're done, but at least I know it's fully highlighted, so if anything does show, it should look good. <laughs> 
So that's the body and legs largely done. Moving on to the next sub-assembly was the one that I completely omitted in the previous video, which was the tail. I'm not actually highlighting this as much as the rest of the red flesh, because it's already going to be quite a focal point, the tip of the tail in particular, and I don't want to draw attention away from other areas like the face, but I did decide just to highlight the peaks of the ribs in the middle of the tail and just the sides where it seems it would naturally catch a lot of the light. Uh, so this is effectively the brightest colour that will go on the tail, uh, outside of obviously the bright lines for the striations for high flick bear moth colours, but of course we haven't got that far yet. Nothing really complicated here, as you can see I'm just trying to keep the brush within each segment rather than painting the kind of valley between them. I suppose at this point you could be really strict about what would be underneath the body and therefore in shadow, uh, but that really depends on where you think the light is coming from. On this I'm going for just a very general lighting effect on the basis that if a shadow is actually cast by the body it will naturally darken what is there, even if it is highlighted. So. I'm just going for that kind of lighting effect. If you're trying to do more of a like, hyper-realistic effect, you could actually omit some of the sections of the tail which you think where it folds over it would naturally be in shadow. Now I'll just flip this round to just go over the sides of the tail where I feel I've kind of missed it from the one side. And now moving on to the head. Uh, now of course this got a lot of highlighting with Wild Rider Red so you've got to be very careful to paint the adjacent areas and not wipe out the Wild Rider Red highlights so we have to be very very selective when painting this part of the model but of course it is probably the major focal point on the mini. Everybody always identifies with the face and the eyes. And so you've got to be careful to actually get this bit right. It's worth taking those extra few minutes to get paint in exactly the right places, have exactly the right graduations, even if that then means you have to come back in with another color and correct what you've done. It's still better to do it that way and have this piece absolutely spot on. Now of course the area I'm painting now isn't quite as high contrast as it should be later because I've yet to go over the carapace plates again because there's a bit of overspill from where I dry brushed with the Mephiston Red earlier. So once those are actually painted black again you'll see that there's actually an immense amount of contrast between the carapace plates on top of the head and the build up to a light colour at its edges. Now of course another advantage of doing this is I can go over the edges of the craters on the sides of the head as well as areas at the back of the head just to lighten them a little so that the highlights elsewhere aren't overwhelming. So it might seem a little unnecessary but it does smooth out the tones even if where I'm painting isn't necessarily right next to some more brighter red. going along the line of the jaw. Uh, the idea here is actually to thin out the line so it's a thinner wild rider red line and right next to it here's Evil Sun Scarlet. It's not super easy to do but it actually adds something. If you've ever wondered how uh, painters get mega mega thin lines this is one of the methods. You can of course use a much finer tipped brush uh, 
Um, but there's always the risk that your line won't be perfectly straight if you do that. Whereas with this one, if you paint too big an area and then cut back in with a darker color and paint over most of it so that only the very edge is shown, you generally get a very thin line very easily. Finishing off with just some areas around the base of the head, uh, obviously this recesses into the neck area so I don't know how much of this will show but it will be so hard to paint later on it's worth doing now. Right, just a small correction, apparently I missed part of the jaw so I'm just filling in that section now so that it's the same as the other side. Moving on to the sword arm, this one was almost all edge highlighting so now you've got to come back in with a slightly darker colour, the Eagle Sun Scarlet, and just paint near the edges of it to make it look like you haven't just edge highlighted the dark colour but you've actually got a build up of colour from light to dark, which means although it seems like a small piece with relatively few details, this is actually one of the more complex bits of highlighting. And in fact, actually in the next video on this, you'll see that I feel the overall colour of these arms is still a little dark, so that I have to come back in even with the previous highlight colour and add a bit of army paint of pure red to it because the overall arm is just so much darker than the rest of the model. Now, some of this may seem a little unnecessary and a little laborious, um, but the simple reason is there are a lot of details on this arm. The arm below it has far fewer details, and so it's a little easier there to just highlight a little bit. Whereas this has a lot of raised lines that then need either the edges of them painted with this colour, or as they fade back into the main arm, that needs to be painted with this colour and so on. So even just the upper arm here, it's taking a lot longer than you might expect and then the forearm is also full of lines and creases which then need the, at least the edges of painted in this colour. That having been said, I'm hoping that you can see that as I do this, the highlights on the upper arm are now much smoother and much more blended together than the highlights on the lower arm, although that is improving quickly as I just add a little bit of Evil Sun Scarlet, which is all the justification I need for doing this step and spending this time on it. I mean, part of it is me learning how to do layering, but part of it is also that this will look good and also look like the other Tyranids for my army that I've already painted. Now you may notice on the outer edge of the forearm there is an area near the elbow which is extremely dark with wash and my idea there was to have a graduation from light to dark so it would be light near the wrist and gradually fade back so if you see me highlighting a large area heading towards the elbow that's the reason so that it actually shows a bit of a graduation and a full range of tones as you go along. 
strictly speaking is called layering, which is essentially painting with slightly transparent paint. Um, but I actually think of this as blending because I'm actually helping the tones connect from light to dark. So I'm painting between, if you like, a mid-tone and a light tone with this that's somewhere in between the two. And it just helps tie all the colours together. So if I ever talk about blending in particular, I'm not talking about mixing colours on the palette necessarily. necessarily. I'm talking about doing this kind of work where you're actually painting either with the two colours mixed together or an intermediary colour that you have actually purchased. I'm hoping that you can see as we've gone along that the upper and forearm are now much more nicely blended together and as I do a little bit on the hand, even though it's just a few brush strokes, you start to see the same effects start to happen there as has already happened on the ex exoskeletal sections of the upper arm and the forearm. Now the tricky bit at the top of the hand is only tricky because of the way I've mounted this so that the mount is actually slightly in the way of where I want to place the brush, which does make it a bit difficult to get colour on there and even more tricky to actually show you that I'm getting colour on there. I'll have to work on this camera position for future videos. So as I just finish off the fingers, that is this sword arm largely done, completely blended together and now we need to repeat the same steps for the lower arm which is holding the whip again. Much like the last video, this arm has a lot less detail so there's actually more area for a subtle graduation of colour. There's actually fewer details to paint. have to look out for on this arm because it doesn't have a big shoulder carapace in fact it doesn't have carapace there at all we do have to make sure that it's balanced on top of the arm so that the peak of the shoulder does actually look highlighted and isn't actually darker than the area just below it where you've got the cutout which I've highlighted the edges of As I hope you can see here, I'm actually doing quite a bit of work to make sure that the tip of the shoulder is fairly light. It doesn't have to be, you know, super, super bright, but it does need to be lighter than the part of the arm immediately below it. Now there is this area on the inside of the arm which is like a deep recess which I'm actually leaving largely dark so that the areas around it might be highlighted but the area actually in the recess is not. <laughs> 
it is quite difficult to do the area right by the spikes where I've got just a very thin area that has Wild Rider Red and I'm trying to paint a thin line just below that but I think I'm just barely managing it here. The rest of this work is largely to do with making a graduation rather than a step change in colour. It's just there is a bit of guesswork and then a lot of rotating of the model to try and get the brush in from the right angle to make that happen. watching this footage back compared to my other videos is there is a lot more taking a step back checking having a look seeing if it needs more color as I say this is more of a kind of blending rather than conventional layering stage where I've already painted a light dark and medium color and then this is coming in with a sort of between light and medium color to work on it to blend the tones together so it is just taking a bit of time to establish where I need to put that color the hand there's a similar issue with the fact that you need to add colour without wiping out everything that's there but somehow painting thin lines that's why I'm using quite a narrow pointed brush the S layer brush from the Games Workshop which isn't the finest brush that money can buy but it's pretty good value and has a reasonably fine tip and it's perfectly adequate for this kind of work bearing in mind that the layer paints themselves are ever so slightly transparent so if you do slightly paint over a darker colour it is a little darker and if you slightly paint over a lighter colour it is a little lighter so that actually saves you a lot of work compared to having to paint in with very very solid colours that would obscure absolutely everything that they touch for blocking the back but it's this awkward area on top of the hand where I've just got to paint the area in the sort of recess of the thumb and the top of the hand where there is a little sort of cut out in it and I'm just trying to paint the areas at the edges of that and that pretty much just finishes off the whip arm even though I've just bumped into the sword arm and caused it to wobble a bit. Finishing off with the uh, two arms attached to the bio weapon. And so, same idea again, I always paint the upper arm fully first, and it's similar to the sword arm in the sense that this has a lot of lines, ridges, and small details, including on this one on the inside of the forearm, there's areas where tubes or wires or something seem to go from the gun into the actual arm itself. So we've just got to be careful that we get paint on all of those areas without obscuring the work that we've already done, otherwise there is really no point in doing the early steps. One advantage here in taking my time is, unlike the previous video, I haven't had to do any error corrections so far. Fingers crossed there won't actually be any. Um, this is partly because the paint is transparent and partly because I'm taking my time over it. feel that the outer edges of these arms are the most important parts but I actually think the inside of the forearm and the hand are important as well because if you actually look at the face of the model from the sort of sword arm side across the model you'll actually see those hands and you see the inside of the forearm so they do need to be on point. <laughs> 
because of course obviously if your eyes will be drawn to the face but then just beyond that will be these hands that are actually quite close together on this model so I just do want to get these right the first time if I can. Now, as I've said, this uh, forearm, particularly the inside of it, is a bit more complex than it looks. There are a lot of lines and details that just need to be carefully gone over. And of course, I'm trying not to get paint on the gun if I can avoid it, because that will need painting over later. So I'm just having to twist it about a little bit, get paint where it's needed rather than where it is not. Same again with the hands, just painting these lines very carefully. At least here you can see the top of the hand where I'm painting around this kind of recessed area. Not going over the Wild Rider Red, but just painting off to the side of it. And then the same, painting just behind each joint in the finger so that it graduates from dark to light rather than having a step change at each knuckle, which would probably be okay because of course the skin or whatever it is would be stretched or tight there. but. Uh, again, I still want it to look more natural and match what I've done on, for example, my Tyranid Warriors where I did have a nice subtle change of colour from light to dark. off the details in the fingers and that pretty much just finishes the upper arm and then that's done I think oh just a couple of more bits and then we're moving on to the lower arm which again rather like the whip arm has fewer details so you'd think it's easy by comparison and it is in the sense that there are a few steps to take but as you can see I've got this very bright part on top and wild rider red and painting all the way around that to blend it and then I'll do the same all over the rest of the upper and lower arms just where anywhere where it's sort of edge highlighted I need to paint around that maybe make the lines a little thinner if necessary as well as brightening the overall colour because of course the whip arm ended up quite a bit brighter and then if this balance of colour isn't quite right I can always come back in with this colour or even the, the sort of medium army paint of pure red and fix this later if it is a little light or a little dark overall. noticing on this arm on the inside of the elbow you can see the lines are really really thick they really stand out even on the video so as I'm painting off to the side I'm actually partially going over those lines because they are so thick and that actually makes them thinner and then you get a nice thin edge highlight with the adjacent colour being only slightly darker you can see as I'm doing this the difference between the upper arm here and the forearm is becoming more and more pronounced as I go along and the overall colour is actually getting a little brighter which I don't mind at all 
Uh, the overall colour of course was a little bit on the dark side compared to what I'm trying to aim for so this is definitely taking it in the right direction. And then as I work on the forearm itself, uh, filling in the areas between the lightest colour and the medium colour, it should also get a little brighter overall which is exactly what we want. Now part of this behaviour is to turn down the Wild Rider Red, which was painted quite generously on this arm, but then also uh, simply to add colours next to it so that it blends with the other colours that were already there. You're not trying to obscure everything that's gone before, but you can partially obscure the Wild Rider Red if it's over the top or if you feel the line is too thick by painting the Evil Sun's colour partly over the edges, just to make it a bit more subtle. Finishing off with the hand on the lower gun arm. Same again, going along these ridges on the back of the hand, painting the area behind each knuckle and painting the area on the top of the hand, though with this one that's less important because it is under the gun. And then of course these fingers are very tricky around the actual trigger, but painting them like this is a lot easier than trying to paint them after you've painted the gun. When you know, if I get overspill on the gun now, it doesn't matter because I haven't really painted it yet. Whereas if I get overspill onto the gun after it's painted, that's a problem. And of course, the claws will be painted in blacks and greys, and then the gun will be painted in grey and a little bit of a kind of flesh colour for the tubes and so on. So quite different to the uh, the red flesh on the arms and the hands here. Right, if you watched this far, first of all, thank you for watching. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. If you liked it, please hit like, hit subscribe, hit the little bell-shaped icon so you can get notifications about future videos. I hope they will be coming out soon.